joining me today from Department of A, Trade Consumer Protection, is my friend Michael. Michael, welcome back to the show. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great, Jeremy. Thank you. Thank you for coming back. And uh, today we're going to be talking about day, uh, Data Privacy Day. Not easy for me to say. January 28th, 2023. And, uh, you know, as we look at this interview, I, I chuckle because we we crisscross these things things uh, on uh, data privacy so much throughout the year. So, And we've been working with you guys for many years now, sharing this great information. Uh, but uh, as I've learned, and, and I have been scammed, I, I listen to you, I try to follow everything you say, but darn it, things just continue to change and find different ways of, of you know, getting to your data, getting to your privacy stuff. So the day is good to remind us that we are all human, and uh, DATCP is here to share some great tips. So when you guys look at it each year, what are your goals? What do you kind of are hoping that, that folks pick up on this and you're not a broken record? Well, the goal is to continually have that, that little flag in the back that's going off on any time you're doing something digital. You know, we have Data Privacy Day on the 28th. We have Data Privacy Week. We have Data Privacy Month. And really the goal of those is just to maintain awareness on what are some of the things you should be looking out for. Because as you mentioned, no matter how aware you are, there are so many opportunities to either be victimized or not be aware. But as we continue to move further and further into a digital world, it is impossible not to have your data somewhere. And so the point is to just have that, that forefront awareness to be like, all right, sometimes it's unavoidable. Like you're just gonna have to enter your data to you know, complete whatever application you wanna complete or sign up for something that you need to do. And so it's just using your data smartly and making sure you understand how it's going to be used down the road. Yeah, I look at, uh, so we got some topics here that I'm looking at and I'm thinking of this as it's your level of exposure. Like we all are taking these levels as we sign up for things, as we keep growing this list of passwords and uh, places that we're visiting online and uh, you know we're leaving this footprint uh, that exposes us. So uh, starting with social media, uh, what, uh, what are some tips there that we can uh, at least watch what we're doing to minimize that exposure? Yeah, you know, as we have, we continue to see new platforms, you know, come to the forefront and, and, and be used. And of course, you have your mainstays that have been around for a long time. And there's knowledge out there on how to watch those settings. But what we want to do is pay attention to what functions or settings are using your information to allow for tracking, what's being shared. And more importantly, how can you customize and either disable those functions or you make sure that your information is only being used for what you want it to. And one of these challenges can be is understanding each one of the platforms themselves and the intricacies of where you need to go. And, you know, right now, if you use most of the operating systems on our phones, you know, if you go to the settings, you can just scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll for all the different features to turn on and off. And it gets overwhelming to understand what those mean and how you can use them and what it does. Uh, it also is understanding, all right, well, if I click this, do I have to do something else also? You know, does it stop just my friend list from going out? But does it not stop for my browsing history to get used? Or where I've been, you know, my tracking for my maps? And all these things, as we've seen, you know, just a, a quick search on an engine would show you, all right, there have been some companies that have abused this. And yeah. you know, got to make sure you understand how that is. It's it's being aware, like you said, it's the awareness of of what you're doing out there and and really putting yourself out there and what are you leaving behind? And one of those is the cookies, tracking cookies, uh, which is, is, has always been fascinating because they're in some ways they work in your favor. But I don't think you really know how deep that goes. And it's it can be frustrating. You bring up a great point about them, you know, using them to your favor. And, and sometimes we use so many of these terms with like that negative context that we forget about, hey, there is a good use for some of these. You know, cookies are small files that kind of track what you do, but they make it easier and they kind of tailor things for you. So maybe your experience is a little bit more streamlined, a little bit better. Uh, but also the flip side is, or maybe they're just tracking your data and using it for some type of malicious intent which goes back to what we talked about earlier. One of the, the, the challenging things about cookies that I've, I've seen here recently is in order to access some sites, you just purely have to accept their cookie tracking policy. 
you know, so then you really have to ask yourself, well, what are they doing with it? And do I really want to be on this site? Sometimes you do. Uh, it used to be where you just had to review and accept or decline and that was it. And now you either accept or you can't use the site, which is which is concerning. It is. And uh, I think just that 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 moment when that question comes up, even if you stop and think about it just for a little bit, you guys smile at DATCP. I'm just saying or a bell rings or something. It's got to be that way. Uh, in all serious, though, it, it's taking that moment to really think about those decisions that you're about to make. Another one is providing your data. So you're physically putting your data out there. You're <laughs> you are literally doing the opposite in some ways. How do we know it's safe? Well, making sure you know who you're giving it to and whether you really want them to have it. Like, do they have a need for it? That's what you should be asking yourself is saying, all right, I, I'm sharing this. They didn't ask if they need it, but do they really need it? Or more importantly, you know, I'm on, say we're on a, going on to buy firewood and they say, hey, we'd like to access your photos. Well, why on earth would they need my photos for me to just buy, you know, this particular product that has no tie to it? Uh, the key here is exactly what you said is don't making a quick decision. And this can be difficult sometimes because if you go on and say we're trying to cross check prices on something, well, there's a site cookies, there's a site cookies, there's a site that wants this data, there's a site that wants this data, just to kind of navigate through the website to find out what you want. So the point is to just take a step back, which can be difficult to do, you know, recognizing that so many of these digital platforms will ask for it. But we're never, I mean, we know that those terms and conditions that you have to acknowledge are 17 pages long. Uh, the best thing, because most people are just not gonna read those while it's gonna have some important information, is just ask yourself, does this site need what I'm going to give them? And then make yeah. a call. And like you said, I think it's it, it's really digging in on some of this stuff. and Or if you can just understand some of it at the surface level for things to look out for, I think you're better preparing yourself uh, to protect yourself in uh, this data breach uh, world. Now, data breaches are common and uh, they happen and you guys report them, uh, especially at the bigger level. Uh, but uh, overall, uh, how much should you panic when you see a data breach come out and you, you're you like, oh, man, I'm totally on that site? Uh, I don't know that I would say you have to, to panic a lot, but I think you should always have a certain level of concern. And there's a few things you can do about that. You know, the first is do a quick inventory for yourself of how often do you use the site? What information did you maybe put out there? Is it just a matter of, you know, you were going through it or did you make a lot of purchases? And so, you know, you mentioned that data breaches are everywhere and even who we would expect to be the most secure places get breached. You know, a few years, well, several now, the Department of Defense, you know, was breached and just millions of soldiers information was, was released. So even those that you would think are impenetrable clearly can happen to. Uh, I would say the first, what you really want to do though is if you think you may have been potentially victimized or you had your, your account information out there is make sure you have a credit freeze on uh, we have information on our website. Credit freezes are free. You can turn them on. You can turn them off. It's one of the best things you can do to protect yourself. And if you think things are looking a little bit goofy, you know, maybe there's some new charges on an account or you're getting a call from a security agency that says, hey, you got some weird purchases, run yourself a quick credit report. Make sure you don't have some new accounts. Uh, do that. Stay aware of it. You should be okay. There's a lot of great resources on your website uh, that that can take you down this path if you're interested in learning more about data breach, protecting yourself, which I would totally advise you actually read uh, every so often so you understand because you guys do provide uh, great tools and things continue to get updated like the credit freeze was a big one when that came uh, came about. So definitely a big tool there in your tool bag, uh, you the viewers out there uh, in DATCAP for helping us uh, find. Final one I want to get in is passwords, uh, the never ending password world. There's password protectors out there, but are they really say <laughs> Passwords are really complicated. And I think at the end of the day, you guys have summed it up pretty good in other, other interviews that we've done uh, as, uh, you know, update it. It's simple. Update it. It is, you know, and, and it, I, will, I will admit I've been guilty of having some pretty simple passwords in my life and I've definitely replicated them. Uh, but, but as as we've had so much more exposure to changing your passwords and these new approaches to it, uh, I, I even learned myself, I'm like, you know what, it's pretty easy to come up with a phrase that you'll easily remember that no one else would think of. And then also, as you're seeing more and more sites and, and devices uh, offer multi-factor authentication, which is super easy. You know, it sends that text to your phone, 
most of our phones and operating systems will automatically populate that code right back in it. So it's taking an extra seven, eight seconds, but you are substantially increasing your security on what you're doing. And if you're sending over in today's day and age, some financial information or things you want to keep secret, I'd say it's worth that seven seconds. 100%, 100%. And that's the best, I think one of the best technologies to protect us uh, and uh, is, is something again that you got to take some time and, and update all right i won't uh i won't quiz you anymore here uh we'll leave it at uh the the find the resources ton of resources on this and again if you haven't stepped foot on the website of department a trade and super protection you're making michael sad so michael tell them where they can find out more information and, and really get continue to be educated because you said it from the top that's the goal stay up to date the goal is to educate and keep Michael happy. And you can do that <laughs> by going to datcp.wi.gov. Uh, we have all the things categorized. I would say just for the topic we're talking about here, you go to data privacy, you'll see everything we've talked about. It's very easy to read, very easy to follow through. We give you the resources. And if you are confused or have a question, give us a call, 1-800-422-7128. We'll help you walk through anything you need. Michael, thank you so much. I know it can be, uh, it, it's a lot of information that you're used to talking about, but I appreciate you still going through it and and still get, there's stuff that I learn every time when we sit down and, and talk about this stuff. So appreciate your guys' work there. Uh, and uh, we'll look forward to checking back in with you real soon. Thanks, Jerry. I appreciate the opportunity to spread the message once again.